I'm excited today to show you what God is specifically doing through discovering the Jewish Jesus in the land of Israel. We were recently there and we went for two specific purposes. Firstly, we went to preach the kingdom of God, to preach the gospel to Jewish people. The second reason we went was to help Jewish immigrants that had recently made Aliyah. Aliyah is a Hebrew word which means to go up. And the concept is because Jerusalem is elevated above every place else on earth spiritually, whenever anyone moves to Israel, they're going up, they're making Aliyah. Now I wanna focus first of all today on that second need that I share with you. We went to help immigrants that had moved to this land. You see, a couple of years ago, we made a friendship with the local pastor that lives in Jerusalem. His name is actually Pastor Israel. He told us about a need that his congregation was concerned with, and that is to help these Jews that are moving to Israel from around the world, and oftentimes they have no support. They've been scattered around the world, according to prophecy, but now prophecy is being fulfilled because the Lord is bringing them back just like he promised in the word of God. You see, when Israel was restated as a nation in 1948, it opened its borders to Jews from all over the world, granting them automatic rights of citizenship. And today these Jews are flocking to their homeland. But when they get there, they don't have family oftentimes or jobs, they have no support. And so we went there to help these ones that had made Aliyah to Israel even further to Jerusalem. And beloved ones, I wanna tell you, it was so meaningful for me to see how God was regathering his people and to be able to play a small part in helping them was just so fulfilling. And those of you beloved that are connected to this ministry, I want you to receive what God is doing. Let's take a look right now. The rabbi, uh, we're working in Jewish community, so we're helping the Jewish people. Most of them, they are new Jewish immigrants. In Israel, we don't have normal immigration. People not just move from country to country, but we have a lot of return. So Jewish people coming back from the north, east, west, and from every corner of the world, they coming back. And when they coming back, they need us, they need our help, they need more food, more everything. And uh, we are blessed to be there, to meet their needs, to love them, to smile to them, to receive them, but also give them practical help, give them food packages. Uh, speaking of biblical perspective, there is many scriptures like Isaiah saying, comfort, comfort my people, says the Lord, speak tenderly to the heart of Jerusalem. So here in Israel, people come in, uh, you know, out of rejection, out of uh, anti-Semitism. Uh, many believe all the world hate us. Now we do that in interaction with Rabbi, and Rabbi represents not only Jewish people of America, he represents Messianic believers and he represents Christians. So we're always openly saying to them, this food comes from Jews and Christians who love you, pray for you, stand with you. So that touches hearts of people. So it's not only uh, to provide basic needs, it's more than that. It's really, it's a way to express practical love. And it's just beautiful. And I do believe it's biblical. You see, Paul told us in the book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 26 and 27, that because the world has received such an inheritance through the Jewish people, the world's response should be to support the Jewish people materially, especially those, Paul was speaking of, that were poor. You see, God loves Israel in a very special way. He's still got a very special destiny for them. In fact, he told us in the Torah that he would bless those that blessed Israel. The bottom line is God has a special place for Israel and the Jewish people. He called them the apple of his eye. And those of us that are born of his spirit, we should love Israel too. Meet Art Yom and Mary. They recently immigrated from Ukraine to Ashdod, Israel with their three children. They are among the thousands of Jews who move from another country to Israel each year. This process is known as Aliyah. The government provides housing through absorption centers like this, but the transition is still rough. With no family or friends in Israel, people who make this move will feel lost, 
confused and alone. Artyom and Mary were doctors in Ukraine, but they did not know when or even if they could get jobs in their careers here. It took close to 10 months for them to get a full-time job. That is when they heard about a humanitarian outreach sponsored by Discovering the Jewish Jesus. Rabbi Schneider worked hand in hand with a local congregation in Israel to meet the needs of couples like Art Yom and Mary, providing monthly food and supplies to help them in their time of need. And more importantly, they met and were supported by a local community who would care for and support them. Last year, DJJ coordinated the purchasing and distribution of over 2,700 food packages, which supported 550 Jewish families as they moved to make Israel their new home. This support created a source of connection and friendship in the land of Israel as we fed them and connected them with new friends from our local Israeli congregation. You know, Pastor Israel, one of the things that, uh, that I love about what you're doing is the humanitarian work in terms of not just, uh, you know, not just being concerned about people's souls, but you're also just interested in loving people and being a blessing to them where they need help. And, uh, you know, my desire, Pastor, is that for the rest of my life, I can continue giving humanitarian relief to especially the Jews that have made Aliyah here that are going through a time of transition, that need financial help. As long as God gives me the ability, I'm gonna to continue to be a financial blessing. And thank you, Rabbi, because I want to just a little bit more explain what's happening when people come back to Israel. Yeah. Uh, you know, for one side, Israel is not a poor country, mm -hmm. uh, but we do have poor people. And one of the reasons for uh, weak social programs, mm -hmm. it's a uh, war expenses or security expenses. Mm -hmm. You know, Israel is a little country mm -hmm. in the middle of Middle East, in the middle of, of conflict. Right. And the army have to be strong and it's cost a lot yeah. because a little tiny country of 8 million people living in constant danger, uh, constant battles, fights with terror, fights uh, and battles from outside, uh, battles from inside, within communities, it's tough. And you noticed in every uh, big shopping mall you come, there is security, mm -hmm. everybody is security, everybody is police. Uh, that's only reason Israel can continue to live in peace. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's cost a lot to the government and government not always can provide to these people. So when new immigrants come, when like, Anna and Ellie, you help uh, mm -hmm. young family come into the land. Mm -hmm. uh, these particular guys, they, they are doctors. They were doctors, doctors in Ukraine. Mm. Uh, but they come into the land. The medicine is different. It's more advanced here mm -hmm. and different. Language is different. Mm -hmm. So they need to really go through a few years, two, three years of courses mm -hmm. uh, to prove their qualification, to study. Now, uh, they cannot work and study. Mm -hmm. It will take them forever. So they drop and work living only on governmental assistance, mm -hmm. and it's very small. Now, everybody knows, two, three years later, they will be fine, right. you know. But now it's a crucial time. It's a, it's a kind of strategic time to help them. Mm -hmm. So what we do with your help, we come into their lives and giving them these packages of food. It's not much, but you see they're coming. So mm -hmm. it's really impacting them and helping them. Yeah. And you know, when you come to the land, like this couple I mentioned, uh, with two suitcases, mm -hmm. and you ask them, what do you need? Come on, everything, mm -hmm. <laughs> literally, even little things, mm -hmm. you know, like walk to your house. Imagine it's empty mm -hmm. and imagine you need to refill it just in a uh, in few days. Mm -hmm. That's lots of money, you know, yeah. even with the uh, normal lifestyle, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's like after fire coming mm -hmm. into brand new house with no furniture, mm -hmm. with no uh, kitchen tools. So uh, any little th thing, any little help, these guys really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Rabbi, because uh, doing that, you impact in many lives, Praise many God. families and kids. And it's many a beautiful, people. it's a beautiful thing. And you know, it's not just that we're doing a good work, but we're really manifesting the heart of God himself. Yes, yes. Well, beloved, I just want you to see that through supporting Discovering the Jewish Jesus, the money really is funneling into the world to lift up the name of Yeshua HaMashiach through evangelism and through humanitarian relief. And uh, this is just the heart of God. You know, the Lord even commanded the Israelite farmers that, uh, that were independent, that were wealthy, to leave the corners of their field 
unharvested so that the poor could come and glean from, from, from their abundance. And so that's what we're doing at Discovering the Jewish Jesus. We're sowing into people's lives, not only by giving them the gospel through television and on the ground crusades, but also by putting it to action, whether it's in Africa, whether it's in Israel, wherever the Lord sends us, by offering humanitarian work. And beloved, we're doing it together as partners. Every life that's being touched is being touched because of you. And every act of giving that you participate in is touching the heart of God and you're gonna be rewarded for it. Once again, coming back, as Jesus said, pressed down good measure and running over into our laps. It's just an awesome privilege to play a small part in helping these Jewish people that had recently made Aliyah by helping them materially. It really makes a difference. Now, we also were in Israel to preach the gospel. We were able to gather together 500 Jews, actually more than 500 Jewish people that did not know Jesus as their Savior. In fact, most of them have never even heard the gospel clearly presented to them. We were able to gather them together through advertising in an auditorium in Jerusalem. Many stood up and prayed to receive the Lord. And what we have there in Israel is a full-time worker of discovering the Jewish Jesus that's able to follow up and disciple these that come to faith through the ministry of discovering the Jewish Jesus and then connect them to local congregations in the land there. We were ready and excited for Rabbi to come and preach the gospel. We believe that when he tells them the full gospel, they will have a good chance to repent, to come to Jesus and to change their lives. I think maybe like 80% have never even heard of Yeshua. They just know his name because of history classes. We are very excited and looking forward to seeing what God is going to do. God bless you and shalom. Бог да благословит вас и шалом. I grew up in America. Я вырос в Америке. I'm Jewish. Я еврей. My mom's Jewish. Моя мама еврейка. My dad's Jewish. Папа еврей. I was bar mitzvahed in a conservative synagogue. Я прошел бар митсву в консервативной синагоге. So I went to Hebrew school three days a week, then again on Sundays. А потом в воскресенье. For years preparing for my bar mitzvah. Годами я готовился к своей бар митсве. But in all those years of going to Hebrew school, I don't ever remember the Hebrew school teachers telling me that God loved me, that he had a plan for my life, that he could be involved in the details. I learned how to read Hebrew. I memorized the prayers. But I never was brought into a true relationship with God. God wants you to know today that he desires a relationship with you. He cares about you more than you care about yourself. I want you to listen to this. God loves you individually, personally, and specifically. Beloved, due to the time constraints on television, I can't show you all that I share with my Jewish brethren there in Jerusalem. Suffice it to say, it was such a blessing for me to be able to share with my Jewish family there, because as Jewish people, we're all family, to be able to share with them how God loved them and wanted to have a personal relationship with each and every one of them. For many of those that heard me, this was a revolutionary concept, and many of their hearts were really being softened. As I continued on, I began to show them how Jesus is Jewish, how he's the Jewish Messiah, and he's the fulfillment of Passover. Let's take a look. I want to explain the message that Yeshua brought very simply. What the Torah teaches is that God forgives us when an innocent one dies in our place. 
когда невинное животное умирает вместо нас. Most of you know the Passover story. Многие из вас знают эту историю Песаха. The Israelites had to take an innocent lamb. Израильтянам нужно было взять невинного овцу. Put the lamb to death. Взять барашку и умертвить. And then they took the blood of that lamb. Тогда они взяли кровь этой овцы. And they put it over their doorposts. И помазали свои двери. And then they went inside their house. И они зашли в дом. And when God's judgment passed through Egypt, и когда Божьи суды прошли через Египет, everybody that was in a house, все кто были в доме, whose doorposts were marked with the blood, у кого были эти кровавые полосы на двери, God's judgment passed them over. Божий суд прошел мимо. And they were spared. И они были защищены. Everybody know that story, right? Вы знаете эту историю, да? Well, in the same way, то же самое. When Yeshua, the Messiah of Israel, came, когда Иешуа Мессия Израиля пришел, the Hebrew prophet John the Baptist pointed at Yeshua. Еврейский пророк Иоанн, кого мы знаем как крестителя, and when he pointed at Yeshua, he said this. Он указал на Иешуа и сказал, This is the Lamb of God. Это Агнец Божий. Even as Israel was spared from God's judgment. Because of the ancient Passover lamb's blood, Israel was сохранен из-за того, что была кровь Агнца в Египте. So too, you can be spared and saved from God's judgment. Точно так же вы можете быть сохранены и защищены от суда Божьего. By having Yeshua in his in your life, когда Иешуа приходит в вашу жизнь. Because when he died on the cross, потому что когда он умер на кресте, his blood was shed for you. Его кровь была пролита за вас. And because he died, из-за того, что он умер, just like that Passover lamb died, как этот пасхальный агнец был закрыт, when you receive God's gift of him, и вы приняли этот Божий дар его, you will be spared and saved. Ваша жизнь будет защищена и сохранена. And not only will you be saved from being judged for your sin, и вы будете не только сохранены от грехов и судов, but furthermore. Но даже больше того, после того, как кровь Иисуса была пролита на кресте за вас, Бог Израиля вознес его на небо. Чтобы мы могли принять его в свою жизнь. Послушайте. Послушайте. Дух that raised him from the dead all the way into heaven, this same Spirit will enter your life, empower you, and give you victory to succeed. Now I want to ask you to stand right now as our violinist softly comes, please. I want to ask you to stand with me. You've heard the word of the Lord this morning. Вы слышали слово Божье этим утром. That the God of Israel is still. И он сказал. Encountering people today. Что это время встретиться с людьми. Through the Messiah of Israel. Через Мессию Израиля. Yeshua Hamashiach. Через Иешуа Машиах. Don't ever let anybody tell you. Не позволь никому сказать тебе. That you can't be Jewish and believe in Yeshua. Вы можете быть евреями, верить в Мессию Израиля. Я хочу, чтобы вы знали. You can enter into a full relationship with God today. If you would like to invite Messiah Yeshua into your life right now, I want you to raise your hand. Raise your hand. I'm going to count to ten. And I'm going to pray only for those whose hands are raised. Raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now I want you to repeat this in your heart to God. Say, God of Israel. Скажите, Бог Израиля. Thank you for loving me. Спасибо, что ты любишь меня. I believe in your love. Я верю в твою любовь. Thank you for sending Yeshua. Спасибо, что ты послал Иешуа. Умереть вместо меня. I receive. Я принимаю. His gift. Его дар вечной жизни. Я прошу тебя пометь меня твоей кровью. Я прошу тебя дар Духа Святого. Отец Бог, я хочу идти за тобой. Я посвящаю мою жизнь тебе сейчас во имя Иисуса. Спаси меня сейчас. Теперь послушайте. 
is not over. It's just begun. Только начинается. It's just begun. Оно только начинается. It's important now. Это важно сейчас. To begin to take those steps. Чтобы начали делать шаги. To follow up with the decision that you just made. Идти в том направлении, которое вы сейчас приняли. And so when you go back to your buses, когда вернетесь свои автобусы, they're going to have a lot of information for you. Вам дадут информацию. They're going to talk to you about different classes. Вам расскажут разные встречи. That you can get in now. Tell you to understand how to enter into a deeper relationship with God. I want you to know today. I love you. I love you. I love you. I'm so excited with what God's going to do. We have got a full-time messianic leader here that we employ in Israel. Sergio, he's going to be working with us. 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 Sergio, he's Благословит вас Господь, да и осветит вас. Да осветит вас Господь лицом своим и помилует вас. Да обратит к вам Господь лицо свое и даст вам шалом. Пусть Бог благословит вас, я люблю вас. Самое главное, Бог любит вас, дорогие. When Rabbi was speaking about how God loves us, I realized today that it was true. I today, for the first time in my life, invited Jesus to live with me when I prayed with Rabbi. After the meeting, the next phase will start. We have their names and phone numbers. We will continue to speak to them, do discipleship, and continue to do activities with them. Beloved, I'm an evangelist. One of the criticisms that I've heard against evangelists like myself sometimes is that we go and preach the gospel and people stand up or raise their hand to receive Jesus as their Messiah and then no one follows up with them afterwards and they fall away. I've always been concerned about that and we've made every effort to make sure that those that receive the Lord through this ministry are being discipled. That's why we're so excited to see not only hundreds of Jews standing up or raising their hands to receive Yeshua as their uh, Savior through this ministry, but we're excited, beloved, because we have a process in place to disciple those that are coming to the Lord through this ministry. As you saw, we have a full-time worker in Israel to follow up with people like Michael and the others that got saved through discovering the Jewish Jesus. You see, we want to partner with God in His heart for Israel to see them saved and to see them discipled. I remember Anna that got saved a year ago through this ministry. I remember preaching the gospel and as I was sharing the good news of Yeshua, tears began to come through her face. Then at the end of my message, she stood up quivering, asking Jesus to come and live inside her and be her Lord. But what I'm extra excited about is when we went back a year later, I saw Anna again. She's being discipled, she's in a local church, and she's even encouraging others to come and receive Yeshua as their own Messiah. She experienced first love for Yeshua. I can see the difference. She is always happy, and she passionately wanted to serve Jesus. It is a joy to see her life now. At this last ministry event that I was in, beloved, in Jerusalem, Anna was in the audience, and I asked her to come forward after I was done preaching to share her own testimony. It opened the hearts of so many people that as a result of Anna coming to the Lord through this ministry and then standing up and testifying what Yeshua had done for her, so many other Jewish people stood up as a response to that and also asked Yeshua to come and live inside them.